Shalom. Before I get started, with to say, Alana Dana, Kaha Halai Malaya, Hawa Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Becha Kodash, which means to give our praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, which is our Lord and Savior, and to the Holy Spirit. The Thomas and the Kabbalah has the Quran Shai as Allah, which means give the bonus to the elders of Israel, which is the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who teach and who wear. Shalom, wa ahabla haba chaya shayas Allah, which means peace and love to the lack of Israel and coming again. Through the spirit power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ha Kodash, on the Buddha Ana from Jeremiah's Memphis camp, and pretty much the list could be gone <coughs> into the Lord coming back on the so called UFO, which is known as chariots of our salvation. You know, Lord willing, we are part of the elect, the chosen number. So, Lord willing, this lesson be edified on the uh, quick um, lunch break, so I'm going to try to, you know, make the lesson straight to the point, and I'll be watching this, you know, the lesson be edifying to the left, so this is the book of Acts 1 and 9, you know, we can start at verse 6, Acts 1 and 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, where thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel, because that's who the kingdom of heaven is for, it's for the nation of Israel, the Israelites, the kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. Which, who make up the Israelites is you so-called Negroes, Blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and wherever Israel has been scattered to, they look like the other nations due to the curses, but whose spirit goes back to Israelite. Uh, the kingdom of heaven for us, yes, all nations, everybody underneath the sun, you know, go be in the kingdom of heaven. But if you're not an Israelite, your role in the kingdom of heaven is going to be a, a, a slave. You know, so this verse 7, he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in put in his own power. And this the Lord Yahweh Shah speaking, who the word ignorantly, ignorantly called Jesus. He pretty much telling you it is not for you to know the signs, you know, what time it is, you know. But the Lord gave her what? Signs and tokens leading up to his second coming, which is what earthquakes in diverse places, up wars of the people, wars and women's wars, he gave us signs. You know, Matthew the 24th chapter, man. The love of men in rest and cold. That's why the scripture said, measure out the time diligent in itself. So let's get that real quick. Second Ezra 9 and 1, he answered me then and said, measure out the time diligently in itself when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before. Then should I understand it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. We've seen the Lord visit the world which he made now via the storms and so forth and so on. Especially by the so-called UFOs, which are chariots. Then it said, Then should I understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world, then should I well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world had a beginning and end, and the end is manifest. Right, the end is manifesting right before your eyes. Why? Right? Habakkuk 2 and 3. At the end is speaking that lie. So what's speaking? Prophecy is speaking. So the end is speaking loud and clear. Behold, the end, uh, uh, the end of all things is at hand. 1 Peter 4 and 7. And it's saying, second as it says, um, Nine, for Esau, which is the so-called white man, the Edomites, you know, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of their father. Who is Jacob? Israel, Yahshallah. You see, so the word to come is for who? Jacob. We up next. We the next superpower in the earth. It don't seem like it now, but guess what? It is. The Chinese not up next. You know, we up next. Jacob, man. Yahweh Shah up next. His kingdom, man. But going back to this, verse 7, you know, before I get uh, continue reading, let's get Mark 13 and 32. It said, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Why? Right, only the Father knows, man. You see? Yahweh shall and still don't know when he's coming back. Only Yahweh, which is the most high. And once Yahweh sends back his only begotten Son, Giving that green light is over with, man. <laughs> you know? But as for us, we gotta be watching. That's why the Lord, what's that? Uh, Luke, 
the 12th chapter blesses that man. Let me get it. Revelation 16 and 15 come to mind as well. But it's uh, Luke 12 and uh, 30. Uh, man, the whole chapter good, man. You started 35. It said, Let the Lord be girded about in your life's burning, and let yourselves like unto all unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he come and he knock it, and they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. It's all about watching. We say that in the book of Proverbs, the eighth chapter. You know, blessed is the man that watches daily in his gates. You see, verily I say unto you that he should gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he, and if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. So, blessed are the servants that watch him. Remember, the Lord said he come back as a thief of the night. So we got to be watching, man. We got to be watching. So going back to X, one, uh, I'll be uh, seven again. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witness witnesses unto me both of Jerusalem and all Judea and the Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth like the uttermost part of the earth talking about the ends of the world which is speaking about the western hemisphere which we are in now so they will see that power during that time during Jerusalem during Judea during Samaria because pr pretty much that word power going to um, miracles let's get it that's why you read the book of Acts you know the apostles what, what making the lame walk Making the blind see, you know, acts, you know, the book of actions, man. It's uh, in the Greek. Strong's G, 1411, dunamis, dunamis. I Meaning what? Powerful performing miracles, man. <laughs> you know? So that was, they would see what? Spiritual power. So they would see spiritual power during that time. Best believe the man of the Lord the service is going to see spiritual power during this time, in this lifetime, man. You see? <laughs> so, right. It's saying in verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while that beheld, he was taken up, and that cloud would see him out of their sight. Right? Like, and a cloud would see who? Yahweh Shai. After he, you know, finished talking to him, chopping it up with them, a cloud would see them. And what is this cloud? This cloud is known as a so-called UFO. So UFOs are biblical, man. Let's get on uh, Psalms 104 and 3. Who lay the beams of his chambers uh, in the waters, who make it the clouds his chariot, who walk upon the wings of the wind. So who make the clouds his chariots. And so the chariots, you know, let's get Psalms 6 to 8 and 17. The chariots of the most high, 20,000. Right, the chariots. Who make it the clouds of chariots? What is a chariot? Let's look it up in the Hebrew. The chariots, it's a um, wakab. How you say chariot? Pretty much it's a vehicle, man. A rider, a team chariot. You see? What is saying um, Psalms 104 and 3? Look at Cherry here. Wa, Kawab. But the root word is what? Wakab. Meaning what? To uh, uh, to mount and wide. You know? A, a vehicle, man. You see a cherry. The strongest definition. Which is what? A vehicle. Which is what, you know, who made the clouds of chariots. Going back to Psalms 6 to 8 and 17. The chariots, you know, so this vehicle, right? This so called UFO, right? Which I know in the chariots of the most high are 20,000, even thousands of angels, right? Angels, man. Not no big green head aliens. Which alien just mean foreigner, right? <laughs> so pretty much how the world paint the picture, you know, East South Edom. Which is the devil Make it seem like it, it, it's green hair Big green hair ugly ass aliens man Go <laughs> Come on man No those are angels 
angels and on chariots, man. And it say what the Lord is among them is in Sinai in the holy place. So the Lord is with them, man. And that's what the Lord come back on. On a chariot. Let's go back to Acts. Cause the, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. I don't want to jump the gun. Acts one and nine. When he had spoken these things, well they beheld he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of that sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, and those are the angels stood by them. And, and listen to what they said. L listen to, you know, what they said to the um, disciples, which also said, "Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up in, into heaven? So why are you just stand here looking dumbfounded, right? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven." So, so come in like manner as ye have seen him going to heaven. Exactly. What it said in the NLT, man of Galilee, they said, Why are you standing here uh, staring into heaven? Yahweh has been taken from you into heaven, but someday, because the angels don't know when he's coming back, only the, only the most I know, right? But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So the same way he left, in the cloud, it's the same way he coming back on the cloud. And that's why I say Revelation 1 to 7. Behold, he coming with clouds, right? The chariots, right? And every eye shall see him, right? Everybody going to see our Lord and Savior, which is a so-called black man from the tribe of, tribe of Judah. You see, everybody going to see our Lord, man. And they go bend a knee. So everybody going to see our Lord, man. And every eye shall see him, and they also was perilsome. They're going to reincarnation. And all kindreds of the earth shall wear because of him, even so are mine. So everybody going to see our Lord. So the Lord come back on a so-called UFO. And when he come back, he said, well, I would not meet thee. It's a man. Like in Isaiah 47. And three, that nakedness shall be uncovered. Yeah, that shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. So when he come back, he gonna take vengeance, and I would not meet these a man exactly. He not come back as a lamb this time, man. He come back to lay the land desolate, man. He gonna come back to punish the inhabitants of the earth for for, uh, for their iniquity, man. And it say Isaiah twenty six and twenty one, I believe, man. And you see, he said also what vengeance burning in, in his heart. So the Lord, man, it's about to go down, man. Isaiah nineteen. Let me get ready to end it. Isaiah uh, 19 and 1. It said, The burn of Egypt, behold, the Lord rided upon a swift cloud. You know, don't your foes. <laughs> Even Esau know how fast they go. They disappear, they could stop on a dime, they could <laughs> go backwards, you know. They don't gotta make a full 360 to turn around. You see? Lightning speed. The Lord say come is lightning uh coming out the east. That's how he should come, both of the facing it. So the Lord come back on a swift cloud. And what and should come into Egypt, right? America. Right? Which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, right? And the idols of Egypt should be moving his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it, right? That's your will because of him, man. You see? And all the idols gonna be put down. You're not gonna be no more fucking Buddha. I lie. You know, all these false gods could be done away with. And I can't wait, man. I can't wait till the Lord just put away with false gods, man. You know, no more uh, East Indians, you know, Elam, worship a, a golden cow and shit. You know, because the gods of the nations are idols, man. You know, but let's, um, let's get Sirach. Let's get Sirach 16 and 18. It said, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heaven, the deep and the earth, and all that therein should be moved when the Lord, it's like when he should visit, right? When the Lord should visit the earth. The mountains also and foundations of the earth be shaken with trembling when the Lord look upon them. Right. So it's about to go down. When the Lord come back, he going to do two things, destruction and deliverance. And I hope to take part in the, in the deliverance side, man. I know I said I'm an enemy, but this wisdom Solomon is 5 1. Then should a righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labels. When they see it, they should be troubled with terrible fear and should be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Right. 
the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for, right? Like, because they're not looking for a so-called nigga, a, a, a wet back, a savage. They're not looking for the ch the children of Israel, the true children of Israel, right? The sons of a God to be uh, delivered from the second death. They're not looking for uh, us to be beamed up into heaven, you know? But this is what the Lord come back. He come back to deliver the elect and destroy the wicked. You know? But they're going to be amazed at it. <laughs> the Lord said there'll be some of you standing here should not taste your death. In the book of Matthew, the uh, 16th chapter, I believe, 16, 28. You know? But they're going to be amazed. What does it say? All be here, don't watch, Revelation. So you of those are biblical. Revelation 11 and 12. And they saying they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up here. Wait, come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in the clouds. So the elect will be beamed up into the clouds. Which is what? Chariots. Ascended up. You see? And their enemies beheld them. Their enemies, our enemy did nothing but watch us going to heaven. Beam up the elect. You see? So we're going to be taken up into heaven, man. The Lord come back to deliver the elect and destroy the wicked. The wick of his own people, two thirds, and, and of course destroy the heathen. If he dis if he come back to destroy his own people, two thirds there is. How much more the wicked? How much more the heathens? You see. So this is exactly what the Lord come back to do: to deliver the elect and destroy two thirds of his own people and the wicked, and the heathens, man. But the Lord come back on the so-called UFO. The UFOs are biblical. And those are salvation vehicle, man. You know. So I'm in it there, you know, once again, give our praises to you. How about Shem, how was Shai? By Shem, Kodash, the honors to the apostles and elders of great minister who teach them well. Peace and love to the elect of the nation of Israel.